Jesus. The final moments of Jesus' life are recorded in Mark chapter 15, verses 33 to 39. His journey to the cross has been fraught with agony. He has been neglected, mocked, degraded, and humiliated, in addition to being subjected to torture. Jesus takes his final breath at this moment as he hangs on the cross. Mark chapter 15, verse 33. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. This would be 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and the darkness would last until the ninth hour, or three o'clock. This otherworldly darkness arrived when the sun was shining highest. Because the moon was now full, it couldn't have been created by an eclipse, because the moon can't intervene between the earth and the sun when it's full. This darkness was undoubtedly brought about by God's prompt intervention. Mark chapter 15 verse 34 At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. St. Mark here uses the Aramaic form. St. Matthew refers to the original Hebrew. This might be rendered, Why didst thou forsake me? Mark chapter 15, verse 35. And when some of the bystanders heard him, they began saying, Look, he is calling for Elijah. Those who stayed around the cross, despite the mysterious darkness, are mentioned in verse 35. The darkness would certainly add to the dreadfulness of the situation. It was out of that darkness that the voice of Jesus was heard, and inasmuch as Elias or Elijah was believed to hold some relation to the Messiah, it was natural for some of those who stood by to understand the words to mean that our Lord was actually calling for Elias. Mark chapter 15 verse 36 And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice, and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Before entering the holy place, there was the first veil, and then there was a second veil before entering the Holy of Holies. The holy place would correspond to what we refer to as the nave of the church, which is a part of the church in which the priests were usually present. The Holy of Holies would be equivalent to our chancel choir, which is the most sacred area of the structure. This was always kept closed, and the only person who was permitted to enter it was the high priest, and even then, only on the day of expiation, which occurred once a year. The veil that was placed in front of the Holy of Holies was the one that was torn during the crucifixion of our Lord. It was the responsibility of the officiating priest on the evening of the day of preparation at the hour of evening prayer, which would correspond to the time of our Lord's death, to enter into the holy place, where he would, of course, be between the two curtains or veils, the outer veil and the inner veil. It would then be his responsibility to roll back the outer veil, exposing the sacred space to the people in the outer court. Then and there, to their amazement, they would witness the inner veil ripped apart from top to bottom. This tearing of the veil now meant, first, dispensation, with its rites and ceremonies was now uncovered by Christ, and that thenceforth, the middle wall of partition was broken down, so that now, not the Jews only, but the Gentiles also might draw nigh by the blood of Christ. But second, it also implied that the way to heaven was laid open by our Lord's death. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. The veil implied that heaven was closed to all, until Christ, by his death, rent this veil in twain and laid open the way. 
Mark chapter 15, verse 39. And when the centurion, who was standing right in front of him, saw that he died in this way, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. He must have been standing close to the cross, and there was something in the dying sufferer's entire demeanor that was so unlike anything he had ever seen before, that it elicited the spontaneous cry, Truly, this man was the Son of God. In just a few verses, Mark packs a lot of punch. There's a lot to say about the strange events that occur. Jesus had an effect on those who were close to him. The thief on the cross had a distinct reaction to him. And now the soldier who was watching over Jesus has to comment that he is the Son of God. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus had kept his identity a secret from everyone. But now it was completely obvious to everyone. This man truly was the Son of God. What a declaration for a Roman officer to make. If any of the religious leaders overheard him, they would have lost their minds. They just spent the previous day persuading Rome to execute Jesus, precisely because he was blaspheming about being God's Son. You need to realize that Jesus died for you. Do not reject him. Once you've known him, once you've heard the gospel and rejected it, you can never be the same. It says that when the rich young ruler rejected Christ, he turned away grieved, emotionally disturbed. Because when you reject the claims of Christ, that's a very serious thing. It will be an hour of decision for many of you who will receive him today.